Good evening from Ayrshire. Tonight we're at Millbrae as the First Rock Super 6 continues. We've reached week 9 and the top two in the table go head to head here in Ayrshire. The Ayrshire Bulls host the Southern Knights in what's sure to be a cracking fixture. Let's have a look at the teams that will be entertaining us here at Millbrae this evening. And uh, there is Ayrshire Bulls will lead the way. Five changes from the team that beat Burham Muir, but there's a very settled look about that side. Certainly up front, Thornton Maguire and Scott Bloodworth and Everard, they're ever present this season for the Ayrshire Bulls and the Southern Knights. Patrick Anderson back in the side. Andrew Mitchell coming in after coming off the bench against Heriots and very much impressing last week. But we've got two great halfback partnerships to look at, Robbie. Linak and Jordan against Jones and Baggett. They're going to be key. Yeah, massively so. Tom Jordan moving in from uh, the midfield and been playing some great stuff at 10. So he's been a big part of the turnaround I feel that Ayrshire Bulls have had. And same with Jason Baggett, a lot of pro experience with Edinburgh there. So yeah, it'll be a big battle tonight and I'm sure whichever team kicks best will probably come out on top tonight. Yeah, it could be the little things that make the difference tonight. Kicking best, protecting the ball, line out. I mentioned that to, to Pat MacArthur. And, you know, Pat, Pat's answer was they, they take great stock in ball protection, ball retention. They don't want to give it up easily. Yeah, well, all aspects of the game are going to be huge tonight. You don't want to give away possession, especially on a wet night like this. If you lose ball in your own half, you can be punished, for, uh, punished pretty hard for it. So it'll be about building pressure in the opposition's 22 will be what both teams want to do. And if you can keep ball in there, then it should uh, transfer into points. Back again. Time for the prop, George Thornton. Thornton just pushing away. Andrew Mitchell trying to send it out wide, taken just off the very top of the turf. Mitchell was there. Referee checking the ball. They're trying to come round the corner. Here, I think they scored. And indeed they have Holly Davidson in position to give the try. And it's a perfect start for the Ayrshire Bulls. Yeah, I think that was Blair McPherson squeezed over in the corner there. So the big man will be happy. Good uh, run of try scoring form for him. So he's managed to squeeze over again there in the corner. Fantini did really well going in to set the ball up. Robbie Nairn in there as well. And there you can see the drive through. Still had a lot of work to do, Ben McPherson, to get through. It's well taken, Everard. And there's the rolling ball. This is going to be hard to stop. Referee's happy it came down naturally. Manak plays it out wide. McPherson looking for his second score of the evening. Goals top try scorer. Round the corner they go again, being repelled once more. Ferry and not trying to do the work. The back's now set up to the left-hand side. The forward's set up to the right. It's the forwards who take it in, trying to find a way through. That's terrific textbook play from the Ayrshire Bulls. And once more, they managed to get the ball over the line. I think Ben McPherson says, that's mine once more. There you go. Some baggots. Anderson on the tackle. Not moving away. Holly Davidson was up very quickly. Indeed, until it's safely through. And safely through it goes. When they were on, Billy Wall has seen it. Anderson and Vicar, the wingers, still want to get involved, it's been well taken now they're driving, trying to get things set, they are going round the corner there's a splinter way down in that far corner just waiting for the signal from the referee, she's broken to the side and uh, referee Holly Davidson has given the try well again they went in on mass and for the first time this evening they crossed the try line, this is a big kick Jason Baggett strikes it. The assistant referees look, but the flag stayed down. Well, it was a tough kick, but could have done with that from a you know one try deficit perspective. A losing bonus point for the Southern Knights if they couldn't add to their tally. Now the scrum comes up. Referee will give the penalty. It's coming away of the Southern Knights. To remain the calmest man on the field. Just take a breath. Strikes it. Well, the old adage straight down the middle. Trying to find that line gap. 
They've taken it in, but they've held on. The penalty goes the way of the Usher Bulls, and that will be enough to see them through tonight. Yeah, and potentially take the losing bonus point away from the, the Southern Knights here in the lead Melbray with nothing. So it'll be, a, be an interesting call to see what they do. Hopefully take three points here. Here comes John Jordan. I can confirm the man alongside me, Robbie Ferguson, is Blair McPherson, the double try scorer as the Forsock Super 6 player of the match. As Tom Jordan launches the last kick of the evening and he sent that wide, which will mean the Southern Knights will leave with a bonus point, but it is the Ayrshire Bulls who will take all four points in a tight contest and for the first time this season, neither the Ayrshire Bulls or the Southern Knights can get over 20 on the scoreboard. Yeah, the late penalty from Tom Jordan going wide to the post, which gives us our full-time scoreline. The Isher Bulls 17, the Southern Knights 11. Welcome to Golden Acre, the home of Heriots, on a blustery afternoon here in the capital as they welcome Stirling County in the penultimate round of the Fodge Rock Super 6 season. Heriots, who are currently fifth place in the league, make three changes in the backs after their defeat to Melrose last week. They start with Robbie Chalmers at fullback, Ben Evans and Callum Young on the wing. They've got Robert Kay and Rory McMichael in the centres, and they've got a halfback pairing of Alex Ball and Bruce Houston. In the forwards, they have Chris Keane, Michael Linus and Dan Gamble in the front row, Ronan Sadak and Fraser Hasty in the second row, and they've got a back row of Rory Leishman, Ian Wilson, the captain, and number eight, Callum Marshall. The visitors this afternoon, Stirling County, they line up with one change from their win against Watsonians last week, and they line up with Craig Robertson at fullback. They've got wings of Stephen Hamilton and Tom Roach. In the centres, they've got Grant Hughes and Archie Russell, and they've got half-back pairing, pairing of Caleb Kortveg and Ewing Cunningham. In the front row, they've got Adam Wood, Rainer Kennedy and Lewis Skinner. And in the second row, they've got James Pow and Max Williamson, and they line up with a back row of George Arnett, Connor Gordon and Dean Taylor Menzies, and they'll be captained this afternoon from Hooker by Rainer Kennedy. And we're looking there to try and throw it into the middle, and it does go into the middle. It's Ronan Sadak who brings the ball down. And well hit, and Heriot's again trying to punt the legs and get the get ball going forward. And it looks like it's an opportunity. Heriot's are over, and they get the opening score in this game. Defensive tackle there, a little bit passive in Stirling County. I've got room over on this far side, a little cut back in field, and snapped in the legs. It was um, McMichael who got the tackle there. And again, Stirling County just over the line, and that is the reply score for Stirling County. Persistent pressure, and that is a, a great score from what was a a great initial tackle from Taylor Menzies and it's retrieved well there and it's going to be set up again Linus just setting himself up again I think it's Wilson perhaps with the ball at the back and Herrick's look to try and get a shunt on try and get this moving forward and it's uh, peeled off at the side stretching over and that is an excellent try there from the captain Ian Wilson he just spotted a little gap you could see him all afternoon at the back of the mall just stretching his neck and straining his neck to see if there was any opportunity to strike and tapping the ball in signalling that, that ball is coming in and it's certainly not nudging far both teams here cancel each other out it looks like still getting a little bit of a move there but it's uh, Menzies who's um, got the ball at the base and it's Cunningham who's found the bouncing ball it has went back and now it's Archie Russell who's found an offload on the ground and it's Roach on the far side it offloads back inside Hughes offloads to Roach again and it's went forward in the pass that was so close there the big second rows there mixing together as Courtvig comes back this side, and he's got plenty of runners there. Hughes has found Russell. Russell's got Roach on the far side. Roach has got a man to beat. Steps back inside, dives over the try line, and Stirling County get the score. Comes round the corner, and again, Cammy Fenton just bumping off his opposite man there, and showing what impact he's making off the bench. Is Alex Ball? He finds Houston. Houston's got a runner there, but the ball's bobbled up the top. Leishman just can't gather, and it's going to be a penalty here to Herriots. And just on his right footed kick. And it's certainly got the length, and the assistant referees like it as well. Houston nudges Heriot's in front, 13 points to 12, they now lead. And Holden looking to try and get himself onto this game, and he breaks, he tries to break one tackle, but he's uh, been tackled well. And Kortveg has got some support on the left-hand side. He finds the runner, and Sterling are trying to work hard to get back into position, but the referee signaled, signaled another penalty. But Houston... He's got an opportunity here to add three points to the Heriot score. And again, a right-footed kick. It certainly looks like it might have the distance. And the, referee, the assistant referees are both happy. 
and that is an excellent kick from Houston from his own half and he's able to add three points to the score and it was a long agreement from the assistant referees to keep the ball alive they've got numbers up on the far side but they're trying to go it nice and tight again another opportunity they're going got options on the left hand side a little twist and turn just short of the line they've still got numbers up on the left hand side but still in county are just trying to keep the ball and be patient we've got a couple of minutes left in this game this could be the winning score as they look to try and breach this Heriot's defence an entertaining finish to this tight, tight bit battle between these two teams. Gaudi now. Gaudi has got the ball over and he's uh, found a little gap. Callum Young doing well to almost keep his opposite man off of scoring a try. And County still. And it's, there's a little gap. They've snuck through. The referee has signalled a score in the, almost the final minute of this game. There's a few pats on the back. And Houston now to get us back underway. And it's come back on a Heriot's side. It looks like it's now on a Stirling County side as it's messy on the floor. But it looks like it's going to be kicked out. And it's going to be that man Hughes who's kicked out at the death. The man who kicks out to close play is the man who also scored a last minute try to win it for Stirling County as they secure a place in the third place playoff in the Super Six and condemn Heriot's to a fifth and sixth place playoff. Perhaps against Borough Muir. What an exciting finish to this Foz Rock Super 6 round 9 game at Golden Acre. It was a tight, tense affair, just like it was up at Bridgehawk earlier in the campaign, but it's Stirling County who make amends for their defeat in that game. Again, a one-point victory, but this time it's Stirling County who win at Golden Acre, 16 points to 17. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to Marside for today's Foz Rock Super 6 match between Watsonians Rugby and Borough Muir Bears. Some late changes in the sides this afternoon. Mike Jones comes in in place of Ross Dunbar in the front row for Borough Muir Bears. It means Jamie Drummond is on the bench in place of Finlay Scott as well. And the Watsonians, well, they'll look at the experience of Loman McPherson on the right wing and Rue Smith on the left to try and open up the park and use the width to good effect. Cover yes. over the ball at the moment. It's an important stage for Barramuir. They've found a little split pass, a beautiful one-two on towards Barreto, and he's over the line for a score. It was a case of biding their time, and the scrum half, who himself during the course of this short season... The support line of Killeen Barreto is absolutely sublime. He takes him away from Elms and scores under the post. So important to get that second pass once you give it perhaps the most straightforward option is Frostwick again brings inside centre cuts he into play but oh, what's no, 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 now no, are in trouble because Simprich has managed to snatch and away he goes and the fly half from inside his own half of the field will not be caught and Martin Simprich in the starting lineup this afternoon a lung bursting effort there 13 minutes on the clock and the half backs come good that has just opened things up We'll get to see it again. I think it's been held Johnson. up by the referee. Number eight has gotten under it, yeah. And I think it may be his opposite number that's got underneath him. Oh, it's close there. Sam Daly, really clever line out play. Cute piece of play involving the half backs there as Frost once again goes in. Looks to bring the forwards into Tackle. play. Loose head is Harrison Courtney this afternoon for Watsonians as they're gaining ground inside that 22. No closing no, in no, on the try line. Once more, Courtney will go in. Recycle ball underneath those posts. Watsonians making ground and over they go for the try. That was a case of just sheer persistence there involving a clutch of forwards and they're lifted off the deck. And they'll be aware that he can Watch perhaps up. splinter away towards that right hand side if there's any room at all. They're beginning to work it forward towards the line. There's the raised arm, and it's going to be a penalty try as the referee just works his way underneath those posts. And Barrymuir celebrate a third try coming inside this first half with still seven minutes of the first half left to play. So it will be a, a tap and go here from Ross Graham, directing his attentions towards Tristan Andrews and that Barrymuir line. They continue to press and probe and pepper the line so close. They powered their way over. There's the raised arm off the referee, Ian Kenny. Barrymuir Bears wanting to get the ball moving hand to hand, keep it alive. Create so much more problems for the defence. Yeah, I think he just lost control of it, didn't it? Challenge coming in there. Yeah, high matches. challenge been signalled by Ian Kenny, the, the referee. So Barrymuir will have a, a further opportunity. Beretto. Then on now towards Falls. Falls now finds a gap. Is he going to be over for the score? He is! 
it was perhaps just a matter of time before Barremuir would make Motsonians pay. Barremuir look to recycle again as they try and hone in and try number five. Leading by this comfortable margin and accelerating over they go once again. It's the scrum half who's in the right place at the right time to land another try. His second of the match. All up in hand the whole time. Craig Kerry offloading prior to that. Rhys Tate had offloaded two or three times. Barretto looking for those second touch. There's Rhys Tate's footwork as well. John Nedden is a pick right over the top of the possession and got away. Craig Kerry's one handed offload. It's, it's a hand to hand skill level and a tempo that Motonians can't really cope with at the moment. Cover tackle there as it comes out now towards the replacement fly half. Dancing his way into play there, but a good challenge coming in from Duncan Munt. As again, Mark Morrison perhaps providing an opening New for Watsonians. Another advantage coming the way with Jack Fisher swinging into an offside position. The referee Ian Kenny squatting down, raising the arm as Watsonians just had extra men in position. And an exhausted Barremuir defence, receiving the pass there from Scott out towards this right hand side. And a deaf piece of running there as Watsonians are over for the score. And it's Reynolds who finishes things off. Not quite in the corner, but he was a spare man out on that right hand side and Watsonians well they're eating into yeah. this Barremuir advantage perhaps the clock no, is just going to beat them at the end but the ball you can see working its way out there towards Reynolds and Reynolds had a little look towards the left hand side but thought no this try is mine and he ducks it down yes it's, it runs such clever lines Reynolds he's so you know, good at actually cutting into the line or drifting away from the possession they've been impressive today both sides nine tries but Baramir Bears deserve the victory. And Reynolds, just wide of the, the uprights from the conversion, there is the full time whistle 29 points to 35. A thoroughly enjoyable Sunday afternoon's rugby then at Myerside and it's a third one of the season for the Boroughmuir Bears. Watsonians pick up a bonus point this afternoon but the win goes the way of their near neighbours Boroughmuir Bears.